Hello, this is Max and welcome on DDSDR programming channel. Today, we will talk about R optimization. The first time I encountered any speed problem in R, I stumbled upon a tutorial from the burnstats.com. I would recommend that you go check this out. This is a good tutorial that will teach you and tell you about all the problems and pitfalls that you may encounter in R. We will cover some of those in this tutorial, but not all of it. There will be a link below for all the code that we will use in this tutorial. Okay, so in this tutorial, we will cover different strategies to optimize your code. The first one is uh, I'll show you how to avoid or the consequences of growing a vector or growing a data structure in R. Then I'll show you um, how you may want to uh, change your algorithm or adapt and, and choose your data structure so that you can make your code faster using this. And then we will uh, explore if we can get faster code by using uh, linear algebra. Uh, R is quite optimized for linear algebra and for vectorized uh, approaches. And then finally, uh, we will explore different packages that were themselves uh, optimized and uh, whether they can give us the highest speed up. So let's get going. For this tutorial, we will need a data set and I decided to generate this data set automatically and it's going to be a network of movie viewer and movies. We will have a data frame with viewer ID and movie IDs. Here you can see that I sample IDs between 0 and 199, 2,400 times. All the values will be set to 1. Uh, there would be 2,500 uh, links or connections between viewer IDs and movie IDs. I do this little trickery here by going to as factor and then as integer to get continuous number from one to how many IDs I ended up having in my sample. So our data set can be represented as a network and this is a subset of our data set. The darker blue nodes uh, are associated to a viewer and the lighter smaller nodes are associated to a movie. We will compute the coupling between each viewer and so what i mean by coupling is how many movies they have seen or they have watched in common and so the end goal is to get a data frame where we have let's say uh, viewer id 3 in one column then viewer id 0 in the next column and then a value of 2 in the third column because they they have watched two movies in common that's it for the data set. Let's look at the first implementation of this algorithm. And it's going to be the simplest way that we could code it, or, or at least the simplest way that I thought of coding it. It's very intuitive to me. We basically just do uh, two double loops. Let's actually look at some code and it will get more clear and more intuitive. We will go two times through the data frame. We'll do a for loop to the number of row of df minus one because we don't need to go to the last one because it would have already been caught. And then we go for g in and we do i plus one to n row of df. And we will initiate this data frame with numeric values. The columns would be viewer one and viewer two. In the end of this transformation, we will count all the pairs of viewer one and viewer two to have the sum of the link. Okay, so now we need to ask whether the movie ID for I and movie ID for G are equal. Then if they are equal, we will want to add this row to our data frame. And so what we will do is that we will add a data frame, a temporary data frame, let's call it viewers. And so we will define it in the same way. But this time, the values that we will put in are the values that we got here. But not for movie ID, obviously, but for viewer IDs. Okay, so now we have a temporary data frame and we will R bind that temporary data frame with the basic data frame that we initialized just before the for loop and we will overwrite the original version let's run our code now so let's run viewer coupling viewer coupling should be empty and now let's run our for loop my if statement has a problem okay so the problem is that my mi minus one gets applied to my whole vector so i was starting with a number zero as you can see here my i was zero and then i couldn't index my uh, data frame at zero okay so now it's running i i was running this code before so i know it should run for about 60 seconds 
So it finished. Let's look at our result. And so we see we have the both columns that we defined. Viewer 22 is paired with viewer 119, but then viewer 22 might be paired with the same viewer more than once. So we have one remaining step and it's to aggregate all those uh, numbers together. So for this function to actually do uh, exactly what we want, we would need to aggregate viewer one and viewer two. So each time that they appear together, we'll need to uh, sum them. And so this was already uh, more than a minute and I know it's very, very slow and it's not the way to do it. And so I won't go into uh, implementing the next step. What we will do now is that we will wrap that into a function so that it is easier to time and compare. Let's save that into R calculate VC one. So we will need to return the viewer coupling. I like to use the package TikTok to do a quick measurement of the time it takes to run something. Let's run that and get the time. This is done. It took 95 seconds. So one of the reason it took so long is that we were growing viewer coupling here. What it means is that viewer coupling at the first step was of length zero. And then each time we found a pair, we grew viewer coupling. What happens in R and the reason that this is slow and bad is that R kind of find a place in your memory on your computer to put viewer coupling in, but doesn't take into account that it might grow. And so if you start growing it at some point, you will run out of space of the slot that was assigned for this data structure. And then if you run out of space, what it has to do is that it will take it and recopy it somewhere else. And that read and copy takes time. So this is where you can lose some of the performance. Often it's hard to estimate exactly how big is going to be your final data frame, but you can have a pretty good idea. And so what you will do is that you will define it bigger than what you need and just cut it in the end when you actually know how big you ended up being. And so we will copy this to the next section and this is when we pre-allocate the data frame but we don't do any algorithmic optimization yet and a heuristic we can use here is if we were creating a vector that is a flank equal to the number of row we have in our data frame time something like the expected amount of pairs that each viewer gonna get let's say something like 20 and so that's how we pre-allocate it we just changed that number this is going to be version 2 so our four loops will be the same the if is the same and this time instead of using the r bind what we do is that we take viewer coupling index it with a counter counter is going to be here equal to counter plus one we have to define the counter first at the beginning we will want to go through the rows and fill them in so the counter is going to be here and the one will be equal to our first viewer and then we will repeat this we'll delete what's just above we forgot to uh, reduce the size of our data frame to do this we can just overwrite it where we take all rows from beginning to counter but it will actually be counter minus Minus one because we do a plus one just up there that should be it it turns out that it took 86 seconds and this is nine seconds shorter uh, it's not bad but we can do much better the difference in time as you saw is mostly because we're now not growing the data frame but we are predefining it we could probably have been a bit faster if we had uh, chosen a smaller size that is still big enough this just shows you that pre-allocating your vectors data frame data structure is gonna save you some time the first thing we did to improve on the speed of our algorithm was to pre-allocate our data frame in, uh, in, in the right size. So that's what we did here. Other than pre-allocating, another thing we can do in R is vectorizing. Vectorizing an algorithm is often hard, kind of like, you know, reasoning about it. It will make your code maybe a bit more complicated and reasoning about it will be harder. And R basically means that we will do operation where instead of using a for loop, it will uh, go through each calculation or each element kind of by default because the function uh, is already vectorized. And so what this means is that usually in R, if you use a, 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 base, a, a function from base R, a function from that comes with R, those functions in the back, they will go and do a for loop, 
but they will do it in a language where the for loop is not costly so they will do it in c++ or fortran and so you will get all the speed you need there using the for loop over there if you use the for loop kind of in the front in r then it's going to be very slow to vectorize this code we kind of need to transform it quite a bit so it's not going to be exactly the same algorithm and i will walk you through those change the first step of this is that we will chunk our algorithms in sub data frames of movie ids the main tools or functions that we will use to vectorize uh, this algorithm are going to be the function split and this function will split a data frame into uh, different smaller data frames uh, into a list split df and split takes a factor so as factor and then we'll take the df movie id and we'll save that in ldf then we'll go through a for loop for df in uh, but let's not call it df let's call it uh, sub df for sub df in ldf and this will automatically go get uh, each element of the list once af one after the other if uh, sub df has more than one row we continue so we get the vector viewer id in the combine and we want to combine it by uh, uh, pairs so we will do it like that we will save our results so it can be like a c combine vec and so combine vec it's just a matrix of two columns one row in this case because it was a pair so we will pay, take this column wise and then uh, bind them into a string to have some IDs for the list. We will do that with a simple for loop. Uh, again, it's, you know, sometimes they are hard to avoid. There is quite a kind of a big debate in R if uh, the apply functions are faster than the for function, the for loops function. But from my test and my understanding is that it doesn't make much of a difference. And conceptually, I rather the for loop. Uh, it, I think it's easier to reason about. For column i in uh, one to the number of column that combine vec has. Uh, and so call i would be an index. And then we will go through combine vec with our index. Uh, and the index is the column index. And so we'll put it there and then put a comma in front so that we get the whole row. And then we'll paste those together. Okay, so in this case, we need to collapse because uh, the simple separator wouldn't work. And so we want to collapse it and let's collapse it with an underscore. And we also need, it, need to transform it as a vector because now it's a matrix and so it wouldn't paste uh, as we expect. And let's save this into the viewer coupling name variable and once again let's just break that loop and look at vc name oh combine vec wouldn't work here it's just call i that worked and let's print vc name so now you see it's just uh, the first viewer id and the second viewer id with an underscore so what we will do is that we will put that name within a list but that name could already be in the list or it could be the first time we put it into a list. And so we'll actually use a for loop uh, first and we need to initiate our list at the beginning. So we'll create a list called viewer coupling. And so what we will do is if is null when we try to index it with our new name so this if this does not exist it should this should be true so let's test that let's say is a in that list and it says is null it, it's true it's null so that means that uh, this name is not yet uh, part of the list and so if this is the case we need to assign we need to assign it with a sim single square bracket and then like that and then we will assign it the number one so it's the first time that we find that pair 
uh, now we will have a problem with our names not being the same I mean because if it had for instance if 18 was before 151 the name would be different and because it's a string the the num the, the, the list won't uh, will read it as something very different and so one thing we can do to make sure that the first the, the smaller number will always come before the uh, second number is to sort our data frame at the beginning or to order it by viewer ID okay, now that our DF is ordered uh, we can run our list, except that uh, we only need one more step. It's where we grow or like we augment uh, the already uh, list that has already a pair that exists. And so then we use the double square brackets and we actually will get uh, its own value added by one and save it over itself. And so this way, uh, after we went through those loops, uh, we should have a list where the name matches a pair of viewers where the viewer with the lower ID is always first and the viewer with the, the highest ID is always second in the string. And then we will count how many times they occur. And so that will give us the strength of the pair between each viewer. But let's first uh, test that loop and see if everything is fine. So everything seems fine now it's running so this will be the longest part of the algorithm the the middle part uh, but it's already done so that's much quicker the previous one was 86 seconds and this was definitely definitely not 86 seconds so this is exciting and let's just look at uh, the head of that and so it seems to have worked the number at first is always a smaller one and we have a count uh, a number that seemed to have been counting it. Uh, so what we need to do, like I said, is we will unlist viewer coupling and save that into a column called viewer coupling or maybe VC for short. And we'll start putting it all into a data frame. Now, the other thing we will want is the name of the, or the ID of the viewers in integer. So to get those ID, we will use the function string split and we will give it the names of the list viewer coupling and we will tell it to split by the underscore. Uh, let's look at the head of that. And so you can see now it's a list of those pair. So we will unlist it. And then if we just do one or a six sequence of number from one to 10 that are going by steps of two, we get the index one, three, five, seven, nine. And then if we do the same thing, but starting at two, we will get the remaining number. And this will be useful because uh, when we unlist it, you, we see it was a pairs of numbers like that. And so when we unlist it, they will get all one next to the other. So you see there are one after the other, but by using a sequence of pair and odd numbers, we can then get them into separate vectors into our data frame. And so we will get viewer one here equal. And then we'll use this sequence uh, for viewer one, we'll use one and we will go to the length of the list. So length of V names. And then second one will be the same, but starting at number two. So that should be our final data frame. Uh, viewer coupling. So we have it, uh, but no, oh, I didn't subset with the sequence. I just wrote the sequence and I want the sequence to be subsetting V names and great. So it works. So now this is a way that we can count the viewer coupling strength uh, by using a bit more of a vectorized approach. And so we will wrap this up into a function and time it. Let's go. Okay. 
so is it going to be faster than 86 seconds oh by much so now it took only six seconds and you see that uh, we have most gain when we used a uh, vectorized function you might wonder why we gain so much if we uh, yet we have still used two for loops and this is because our for loops here are doing much less work and most of the work is being done within the split, within the combine. And then we are using a list which is uh, maybe more appropriate to store and, and um, kind of uh, increase or aggregate our results. And then when we uh, bring that down or retransform it into a data frame, we again use vectorized function in R. So string split and names, you know, we, we just give one function and one list and it loops through the list to get the names. We give those names as a vector and then with string split, it goes through this list um, to split it and, and on and on. So all those vections are vectorized and that's why we go much faster. The next uh, Way the next way we will try is uh, by using some linear algebra, and usually in R, linear algebra is quite optimized, and so maybe we will go even faster than six seconds. So we already have a very good speed up, uh, you know, 86 divided by six. So we are we are already 14 times faster, um, which makes quite a difference. Imagine that you were to uh, wait for it. Uh, for 14 hours or one hour instead so this is already pretty good but now we'll try to get uh, to the get, get that even faster and so the trick will be to do a matrix multiplication and so we need to transform our data our data frame to get a matrix and we will do a matrix multiplied by a transpose of that matrix and so this means that the columns and the rows are interchanged and a way that I like to use to create the matrix from a data frame is to transform all of our IDs so the viewer IDs and the movie IDs to indexes uh, for the matrix and so this I mean that let's say we had viewer IDs that were actually names of people one way that we can transform that into indexes in R in a kind of an, a, a fast way is by first using the as factor function and factor will give a dummy variable or an integer to each level in our vector and so in this case each level will be each unique viewer id or viewer and so if we want to get those numbers out after we can use the as integer function and so by doing uh, by getting our vector, passing it to as factor, and then passing it to as integer, we will get numbers of one to the number of unique uh, ID we have. And so in this way, we can just say, you know, the one that has the number one, now the, those data points, they go at the first row of our matrix, second row, third row for the other IDs. And then if we do the same for movie IDs, we will uh, create a matrix that has the viewer IDs and then the movie IDs and we will just put a number one uh, we will fill that up with zeros and we'll put the number one when we had a match between the viewer ID and the movie ID and then we will transpose that matrix and then do the multiplication of that and so it will result in, an ID, in a table that is viewer ID by viewer ID and the number will be the sum of time that they had movie IDs in common and then we will retransform re that matrix into a data frame. And so basically we will just take all of those pairs and put it into a long data frame and then we'll filter that data frame to keep only uh, uh, the uh, instance where viewer coupling is not zero. So let's go that. And first thing is viewer ID as factor as integer now let's do the same for movie ids and so let's do a v v vectors for the viewers and an m vectors for the movie uh, okay so we get those vectors and then we will want to create a matrix and so we make a matrix of zeros where the number of row 
is equal to the maximum uh, viewer ID and the number of call is equal to the maximum movie ID. Okay, so this will be our matrix. Let's call it mat. Now uh, we will go through uh, the length of our both vectors V and M, which are the same length because they were taken from a data frame and data frames are always equal length. And then we fill up matrix mat at index uh, V I M I and we fill this up with just a one when it happens because we don't have any viewer uh, value uh, higher than one. So this is the beginning of that. And then we will do a matrix multiplication time it's transposed, which is T mat. And we'll save the result into uh, VC for viewer coupling, VC mat, like this. Okay, let's uh, look at the head of VC mat. And so you can see that uh, there are several numbers and several count, and the, uh, the dimension of VC mat should be 200 by 200. And so it worked. What this means is that uh, we have now a matrix of viewer by viewer. And so we have viewer uh, ID one, but it's not the same ID as before. Is it like a new one or maybe viewer assigned to first row with viewer assigned to first column, uh, which is in this case itself. Uh, now we will want to put that all into a data frame, but be, because we just want uh, maybe like the uh, higher triangle or lower triangle, uh, because we don't want both sides of the relationship. We just care about uh, unique pairs. We don't care about uh, pair two to one and one to two, it's equal, it's the same. So the way we will do it is uh, that we will do it after we have gotten our data frame by filtering for viewer ID one higher than viewer ID two or the other way around. And so now we'll just create uh, this data frame. I uh, view our one would be equal to repeat 200, no, repeat one to 200, 200 times and then viewer two will be the same thing, but instead of just a normal repeat, it will be a each, I think. Each 200. Uh, let's test that. Okay, that sounds right. And then let's look at the head of that. And so one goes through one to 200 and then starts again, and the other one goes through uh, one for 200 times and then two 200 times. And so we have all possible combinations. And then uh, we unlist or un, uh, maybe if we put our matrix as vector, we will get the value of uh, viewer coupling. So let's do, you see, this was not supposed to be an arrow, it should be an equal. And then like that, maybe Maybe as vector would work. Okay, uh, so as vector, I believe it kind of un uh, destructure a matrix into a one vector by going, I don't know if it goes column wise or row wise, but in this case, we don't care. And then it just uh, puts all the columns one and after the other, all the rows one after the other. So now we will subset that. So we want only the rows where viewer coupling uh, one is higher than viewer coupling two, then, then the viewer two, where uh, VC is higher than one, and then zero. And this should give us an integer, true or false, 
and not an integer or boolean, a true or false, uh, that will subset viewer coupling df. And then we'll uh, save it over itself. Now the resulting uh, rows of this, now we have 10,000 uh, rows or, or pairs, while before when we had uh, put everything together, there was a possibility of 40,000. So this was pretty fast to run interactively. Uh, now let's time it and see if it's faster than six seconds. Tick tock. And moments of truth. Oh my God, this was fast. Mm, that uh, sounds wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, that was wrong. I didn't run. Oh, but this is still very fast. Okay, so this took 0.05 seconds. Uh, and previously it took us six seconds and so this is six divided by zero zero five this is a hundred and twenty times faster than uh, kind of a, a good you know a decent way to code it in base R um, and it's way faster than you know the most intuitive uh, and, and kind of shorter way to code it which is actually, let's calculate that. It's actually almost 2000 times faster than the first way that we tried. And yes, this is a bit more complicated, but it's mainly because we didn't get the data in the right shape. So our data were in a data frame format and most of our code was actually just to transform it into a matrix. And so that was this here, and then it was this here to get it back. The actual computation was all done into the matrix multiplication operator. And so this is it for linear algebra. It's quite good. But one thing I want to do first is check whether the output of uh, R calculate V4 has the same number of row as the V3, uh, which they should have if uh, we didn't do any mistakes and so n row df4 10,399 n row df3 oh it's not exactly the same hmm what's wrong okay, let let me check okay so after after a bit of digging around, I realized that my problem was that uh, I was not filtering my DF viewer coupling in my uh, third version. And so we can rerun it. And uh, now it takes about three seconds. And now DF4 is 0 0.016. So 3.0 divided by 0 0.016. 187 times faster approximately and they now have the same numbers of row now uh, there are two other ways that we can uh, do this and you'll see this code is very very short uh, which would be a plus for those packages and it's by using the package dplyr the package data table they are both implemented in c and they both received quite a bit of uh, effort to uh, to optimize them data table is very famous to be uh, the fastest uh, library or one of the fastest library to do any data transformation when you're kind of uh, data frame oriented and dplyr is quite fast but they are better known for how easy they are to code and to uh, interact with. And we actually did a whole playlist on dplyr that you can get by clicking here. Okay, so in dplyr, in, in the kind of the data frame uh, format, the way we will approach this is that we will join our DF, the, the data frame with the movie, view, the movie viewers and the movie IDs. Uh, we will join on itself. So we will we, we have here, let's say we have our viewers and our IDs. And then so we will double that table and bring it here and find every places that uh, movie IDs are equal and then duplicate those two rows. And then we'll do some filtering and some uh, aggregation. 
and this will be all we need to do uh, to get the data we need and so we put an inner join that's how we call it of df with df by uh, in this case is movie id and then we will filter the results for when um, viewer and data frame by the uh, dplyr by default would put a x and a y when two names are uh, the same so we will want when viewer id point x is greater than viewer id point y we want to keep only this um, and then we will want to summarize uh, on a group so we want to group first so we group by viewer id point x and viewer id uh, point y and now within that group we want to aggregate the column value so we want to sum the column value and we'll say this is equal to vc and this should be it and we want to save that as viewer coupling and maybe dp for dplyr and let's run that value is not found hmm value should be found oh there are two value value x value y we will just use one of them it's the same and so this is it and now let's wrap this up into a function and time it okay so this is it for wrapping it up and then tick the function r calculate vc dply r save that into df dply r tuck and let's run it will it beat linear algebra and this was taking 0 0.0567 seconds okay so it is a bit faster it's about twice as fast uh, as the approach by linear algebra uh, let's write the timing here timing okay so uh, still 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 twice uh, twice as fast are we gonna get even faster with data table and my guess is that we will so for data table we will need to transform our data frame to data table objects then we will create dt1 for data table one as point data point table over df okay so we need to duplicate it for the uh, kind of uh, self inner join to work in data table and then in data table we need to set a key so we need to set dt1 the key for dt1 would be uh, we want to join them on movie id so the key would be movie id no set key yeah set key on movie id and then we'll do the same for two on movie id as well in this case the set key doesn't need to be saved back into dt1 because uh data table kind of uh kind of breaks a rule in r usually in r almost every function that you apply they don't transform your data that you uh, gave in they will just uh, return the same data frame that was transformed and if you want to overwrite it or save it on over the same variable you will just uh, do the arrow and like let's say i wanted to have saved that over as data frame again as df again i would have written df here but in the case of data table it does what it's called a uh, in place uh, change and so it goes in the same place in the memory of the computer and modifies the data frame there and your variable in r they point to that place and whatever is done 
to the actual element uh, that is referred to uh, R is not kind of doesn't know about it or doesn't care about it it just returns what's there and data table will go and just change these things and so uh, it 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 saves it makes it faster because it doesn't have to copy the data and then put them back in a different place but it also makes it easier to work with a big data frame in R because let's say that you have 60 gigabytes of RAM and you have a data frame of 7 gigabytes you're basically almost uh, maxing your RAM already because if you want to do any transformation of it you need to copy the whole data frame onto uh, an, another place and then once you're done copying, you delete the previous version. So you need to first double your RAM before you can uh, rename or overwrite one data frame. In data table, you don't have to do that uh, because it has this uh, in-place transformation. Okay, so let's merge uh, the T1 with the T2. And because we already have set our key, it will know that uh, we want to do the merging on this variable, but we have to allow for Cartesian and we want all of the results back. Um, save that into viewer coupling. And now we will filter like we did for uh, the dplyr dataset, we will filter it. And so the way we filter it is first element first element is the filtering we want to do and so in this case we will have the viewer ID let's just check our results here uh, we have movie IDs uh, viewer ID X value X viewer ID Y value Y a bit like dplyr. R so in this case we want a viewer ID X that are higher than viewer ID Y and we want to do a sum so we want to sum the it doesn't matter but like for dplyr we'll sum viewer x and then we want to do it by group so by and then we pair viewer id x and viewer id y here uh, there is a special syntax to do this uh, in-place transformation and in, in this case uh, we won't do it and we'll just use a normal basic way that uh, the data table would do it and so that's it let's uh, look at it and time it so we see right away we have 10,399 columns and this is the right amount and we have our three columns and some uh, numbers here so that's it uh, so this worked now let's wrap this up into a function and then we will do the comparison of how all of the ways that we uh, computed before in a little benchmarking function okay you ready how long is it gonna take and zero 0 0.017 seconds and this is a little bit almost uh, almost twice as fast as dplyr and so in this case we're talking about very very small gain uh, but you know if it was going to take a day well now it's just half a day and when you're starting to think in these scales uh, just twice as fast is is uh, quite a big difference so it depends what you need uh, and it uh, depends what's the problem at hand. Now let's do a general comparison. To do the general comparison, I'll use the package R benchmark. And then it's just, uh, I will save my benchmark, benchmark res. And then I use the function benchmark. And I just have to list my uh, function within that. So R calculate version 1. Then R calculate version Two. So uh, remember, version 2 was when we pre allocated our vector. Version 3 was when we tried to vectorize uh, quite a bit of it. Version 4 is the linear algebra version. And then we have the dplyr version and the data table version. 
it will resample each of the functions several times. Uh, but I think the default is something like 100. And 100 for our uh, slowest uh, functions will be quite slow. It will take more than an hour. That's why here we would ask for a replication, replication of only three times. And let's run that and I'll pause the video and we'll see the result right away after. Okay, so the benchmarking just finished and uh, now we will have a pretty good idea of the speed difference. And we can see that the slowest version is 8,000 times slower than the fastest version. And the slower version, remember, it was a normal for loop very simple and it was growing our data frame and we were not even in that function we were not even uh, counting or, or making the sum of all our uh, viewer couplings we were just finding all the pairs and we kind of gave up after that because uh, I knew it would be very 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 slow and the fastest is data table dplyr r and the linear algebra approach are actually the same speed and this is kind of weird or suspicious, but I looked at the code that is assigned to VC4 and we see that this is the linear algebra code. And if we look at the code for dplyr, r, we see the dplyr r code. So the, the proper function was uh, ren, uh, it's just that they happen to be exactly the same. One thing to note is that depending on your data, each algorithm uh, won't perform exactly the same. And I can illustrate that by regenerating a new random data set and showing you uh, the, the, a new speed difference. So I'll show you two examples. I'll show you one example where we keep the same uh, data frame size. And so it's the same data set, it's just a different uh, random generation. And I'll show you another case where we actually make those data points even fast, even bigger. Uh, and we will see the difference or how each algorithm scale with the data frame size. And I'll just skip maybe uh, V2 and V3 so that my benchmark runs a bit faster. Let's run that and get some results. The second benchmark just finished and basically the only difference, the only thing we uh, changed is that uh, now we are passing the data frame uh, to the function but the most uh, biggest difference is that we uh, regenerated our random uh, data frame that we generated at the beginning. So this time the slowest version is 9000 times slower than the fastest version and the linear algebra approach is a tiny bit slower than the dplyr r approach and the data table approach is the fastest but what you can also see is that the uh, user here the user self is uh, doubled the dplyr r and linear algebra and this is because i believe the data table is using uh, more cpu or more uh, it's uh, by default it runs in parallel now for the last benchmark, we will improve, uh, we will make that uh, data set bigger. And so we will make it two times bigger and see how does this affect uh, the scaling of our different algorithms. So let's run this. So it just finished and we can see that uh, actually this time it's the approach, approach by linear algebra that is the fastest and followed by uh, dplyr by data table followed by dplyr and then all these approaches are uh, 18,000 times faster and so we see that the worst algorithm scale even worse as we get more uh, data points um, and we also see that there are our three best approaches so the linear algebra dplyr and data table are quite equivalent in this case here you have it how can you make your code 18,000 times faster well do not do a for loop and grow a data set this is not the way to go 
um, you should probably either do some linear algebra or use dplyr data table. If you are optimizing your code too early, you will waste your time or you will make your code be much harder to maintain uh, and harder to read. And yeah, so early optimization is, is uh, often a problem and also might maybe misdirected optimization. So it's very important usually to uh, measure your code and which part of your code are very slow. And so then you can optimize only one part. So imagine that in this case, uh, this algorithm of, of counting the viewer coupling was only one part of a big function or a big program. Well, then I would have calculated the time it takes to run every chunk of my program and then I would have identified probably that uh, this viewer coupling computation is very slow uh, if I had used the first version of it and then I would have uh, started to uh, optimize it. Uh, when you optimize uh, for speed, my, sometimes you will change algorithms that are worse for memory and so you have to consider that trade-off and are, are, are harder to maintain and understand or sometimes you will uh, bring uh, dependencies and other packages and that can make your code sometimes a bit more fragile in the long term if it's a library that is likely to be deprecated or not maintained anymore or things like that. So those are a few things to keep in mind when you do optimization. And uh, otherwise, uh, stay tuned and come back next week for uh, Julia and our video. So in the next video, we will see if we can make our R code much faster by implementing the maybe cr crucial or slow parts of R into Julia. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.